Clear blue water Take me home Bring back them good old days I used to know Must have been something in the water In that old sawmill creek Baptized in the holler I got down on Afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School, back with another video on our On the Water's Edge series. I'm going to fillet this bass that we caught this morning in our On the Water's Edge series and get it ready to be cooked. So I thought I'd do a separate video on how to fillet this bass and then I'll do another video on cast iron cooking in that cast iron cooking series and we'll deep fry this bass, we'll bread it and deep fry it. So stay with me, let's get to this fish. Okay, so now we're getting ready to fillet our fish. And filleting the fish will give us the best meat without any bones in it so that we can use that to cook with here in a little bit. And we'll cook this in a cast iron cooking series. I want to show you how to fillet a fish first. I've got my fillet blade on my Leatherman that I designed with Leatherman. It's got a flexible fillet blade on it. And that helps you to skin the fish better. That's why most fillet knives are very thin and flexible. And what we're going to do is we're going to make one cut on each side of this fish first. And we've already gutted him. In the last video we're going to get right behind this pectoral fin and we're going to make an angular cut through the scales into the meat just like this and we're going to go right down to the bone on this fish and once I feel that bone I'm going to stop and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side so I'll turn him over get behind that fin and make another angular cut to the bone right there and then down and around that fin just like that okay now what I'll do is I'll come up to the top where I've cut through those bones and the reason you leave this head on here is because it makes it a whole lot easier to mess with the fish that way and you go right down beside the spine and just make an incision all the way down through right next to the spine on both sides and you'll feel it when you hit it just like this right down all the way down to the base of the tail just like that and you'll do that on both sides okay now what you can do is you'll be able to lift that meat and you'll feel, try to get this where you guys can see it, and you're going to see those bones in there. And you can then cut right alongside that so that you're getting rid of any bones that are in that fish, but you're keeping the meat. And you'll feel those bones, those rib bones and things. You'll feel those when you're cutting out of meat away. And that's the object of this is to have a boneless fillet when we're done. And get the most meat out of this fish that we can get. Then we'll just cut this away from that fin right there. Just like that. And peel that back. There's a piece of meat right there I don't want to lose. And we'll run that all the way back just like that. 
And then what I like to do is just turn the fish around before I do the other side. I'll leave that attached. And that's where I'll cut my fillet off. Is right there. And I'll just put my fillet knife down there and you can see how that flexes. And that what that allows you to do is it allows you to get as close to that skin as you can. And you'll lose a lot less meat that way. Now this blade's not really long enough for a fish this size. It was designed more for panfish. So you kind of got to move along the fish a little bit. You can't just do it in one easy stroke like you can with a panfish. But it'll work the same way. You just kind of got to push the meat up out of your way as you go. Just like that then you've got the other half of your fish and that gives you one full fillet and that's a nice big piece of meat a couple of little chunks right here I would use this these little chunks right here if I was starving to death obviously I'd eat these things there's a bone in that one but if I wasn't starving to death I'd probably use this for bait another little bone right there okay I'd grind this up for bait for another fish then I take that fillet, that nice boneless fillet, and I put that in just a plastic storage bag for right now until I get the other one done. I'll set that aside. Clean any scales I've got on this cutting board out of the way real quick. And now we're basically going to do exactly the same thing on the other side of this fish that we did on that side. I'm just going to run right down the bone there. Cutting that meat away from the bone. Just like that. If you get a bone in there you'll feel it. Just cut around it and don't worry about it. And then you've got another fillet on this side. You cut that straight back around that lower fin right there. Peel that out. Just like that. Go all the way back as far as you can on that tail. So you're not losing any meat. And then do the same thing, just start in there at an angle. That's why your blade bends, so you can do that. You can see that's just separating from the skin, just like the last time. A little more difficult with a short blade, but it can still be accomplished easy enough. There we go. And that gives us our second fillet. Anything that we got here has got bones in it right here at the bottom. Again, we'll grind out it for bait. We grind this all up for bait, for catfishing and things like that. We got two real nice fillets there. We'll put that fillet in the bag with the other one. And there ain't no question that is going to be a nice meal for one or two people for sure right there. Lock this up for the moment and we'll get ready to cook this up. Put this in a plastic bag and we'll grind this up in a meat grinder. 
can use this for bait for other things like catfish and turtle. Or even trapping bait for coon, crayfish, whatever the case may be. Okay guys, well that didn't take long at all. We got nice, about a half pound, maybe a little bit more worth of fillets here. I'd say that's pretty close to a pound actually of fillets we've got right there. Definitely enough to feed me and the bug. So we're going to come back here and cook it later on. But I appreciate your views. I appreciate you joining me for another video. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my family, and my school. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can.